All right. Good morning. Happy Saturday to you. Thank you for being on. My name is Nikita Borton, and I'm a very proud educational diagnostician with just under 15 years of experience, and I still love it. I still love being an educational diagnostician. I am the owner of the Borton Institute, LLC. The Borton Institute is a high-end professional development firm for diagnosticians with zero to 100 years of experience. So you can follow me on Facebook or on YouTube at the Borton Institute, or you can check out our website. It's www.thebortoninstitute.com. Dot com. And I go live like this on Facebook and YouTube to talk about diag life and to give tips to diagnosticians every second Saturday of the month. Um, so check it out. You can kind of tune in to learn tips or latest information or just trainings on how to be the best diagnostician you can be. So good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, today's topic, I want to focus on brand new educational diagnosticians. Yay! I'm so happy. Congratulations to you. Welcome to this work that we do as educational diagnosticians. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to get here. You slave through your coursework and you finally finish your practice hours. Oh my God. You study your behind off to pass a 253 exam. You went on interviews, you killed it, and you got hired for your first job as an educational diagnostician. Congratulations. And once the euphoria wears off, like passing the exam and getting your first job and all the dust settles and the reality sets in and people are like, okay, well, what do I do now? <laughs> I'm a, I got the job. What should I expect? How do I prepare um, to be a diagnostician? And what exactly does a diag do anyway? <laughs> what is the day-to-day -day grind like for an educational diagnostician? So great questions. That's what I want to focus on today. I want to give you a few tips on how to prepare for your first job as a diagnostician. As a matter of fact, I get so many questions about this. I actually created a digital course. It's entitled First Day Diag Boot Camp. And I tell you, it is a boot camp. Um, you can find it on my website, www.thefortininstitute.com. So I'll share a little bit more about that later. But first, I want to focus on this role of a diagnostician, all right? So what does a diag do? If you can't really answer that question, don't feel bad. Most people can't. Teachers and principals, even other evaluators, they can describe what they see us do, but rarely can they describe or explain the intimate details about what we do day to day in our role as an educational diagnostician. Um, so the diags, there's primarily, our primary duties as a diagnostician falls into two main categories, case management and evaluations. Those are the primary responsibility of a diagnostician, case management and evaluation. So of course it does depend on how your district, your charter school, or the contract company utilizes your role, but generally case management and evaluation are our primary responsibilities. And that's what your day-to-day -day grind looks like. So for today, I want to focus on case management and give you some tips on how to organize and prepare for your case management duties. All right. So case management, let's talk about what that actually is. Case management is you committing to ensure all students in special education or those suspected of needing special education receive the services they qualify for, all right? So the number of students in special education on your campus, in your district, at your charter school, et cetera, 
or those suspected of needing special education are your caseload. That's what caseload refers to these students in special education. And you manage all the tasks that are needed to keep each case in compliance, to keep each student and their services in compliance. So the task varies district to district, charter to charter, like we said, but typically case management tasks include things like IEP meetings. You guessed it, art meetings, IEP meetings. I would probably venture to say um, probably minimum 50%, if that's the role that you have in your respective space, 50% 50 of your time, if not more, and it it probably is more, is going to be geared toward art meetings, IEP meetings, um, scheduling them in a timely manner, inviting the right people to these IEP meetings, chairing the IEP meeting. Usually that's the diagnostician helping to support the discussion, making sure it stays on topic, making sure it's lawful decisions that are being made, um, being the evaluation specialist, being able to talk with competence about an intellectual disability or about dyslexia, accurately documenting the decisions that the IEP committee agreed to. So those are usually the tasks that are associated with IEP meetings, not to mention paperwork. Paperwork is another huge part of what we do as case managers in this role of a diagnostician. You have the huge part of IEP documentation in addition to other paperwork that just comes along with the role of case management, um, consents for assessment, managing transfer students and their IEP paperwork, getting medical documentation to the right students, uh, to the right people, um, your peers, other evaluators, things like that. So the case management job is heavily regulated by timelines and due dates. This case management is not a leisurely job. It is heavily regulated by timelines and due dates. All right. So naturally, because our job um, is heavily regulated, like we said, by timelines and due dates, it naturally increases our stress. Um, It makes us feel pressured. We're working under pressure. Every day counts as an educational diagnostician, and it's super easy to get overwhelmed with all of these tasks that are nonstop, never ending, due right now when we're case managing as educational diagnosticians. So, I want to give you some tips on how to do it well and how to be effective at it and hopefully help to manage your stress so you can enjoy the job, not be afraid of the job or overwhelmed by it because it really is some of the best work we'll ever do on this side of heaven, in my opinion, making sure that children get what they need. So tip number one, be organized. (laughs) That is the first tip be organized. So it's easier said than done. So let me explain what I mean. It is the most important skill, the most important skill as a diagnostician, not the only important one, but I would dare to say it is the most important skill. People know that you're new. They know that you have never been in the role. We're going to teach you how to have an IEP meeting. We're going to teach you how to do an evaluation. But the organizational skill set is something that you have to kind of come with and be ready to do on day one. You cannot survive without an organizational system as a dyad, all right? You have to walk in on day one with a system be ready to organize on day one. So let's talk about that. The first thing that you kind of have to, you know, resolve within yourself and be aware of is, are you a paper pencil person 
or are you a hardcore electronic person? Um, tag me just right in the chat, stick it in the chat. Are you a hardcore paper pencil or do you go straight for electronic devices? Now, one way to know the difference is think about how you instinctively jot down a piece of information you don't want to forget. Just instinctively. Do you grab a sticky note or do you reach for your cell phone and type it into your cell phone? If you reach for a sticky note and paper and pen, this is how I roll right here paper and pen. I know that about myself. If you grab a sticky note, you may want to consider having a, a notebook and a pen at all times and a planner. You have got to have a hard copy planner. This is one I created specifically for diagnosticians, specifically with new diagnosticians in mind. You have to have a planner and you have to have some kind of note taking um, book or spiral, whatever you want to keep. But you have to have one that you keep with you at all times. If 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 you reach for your cell phone when you're trying to jot down some information, you want to have a device. You can have some kind of tablet, some kind of you know device, especially one that has a little keyboard, super cute keyboard that you can whip, whip out really quickly and type your notes if that's your thing. Um, and that's the way that you organize and you keep notes. So whatever you instinctively do, whether it's hardcore paper and pencil or electronic device, you have to have those are your orga organizational systems. When I'm saying organizational systems right now, I mean a planner, a notebook or a device, however you roll. You have got to have it with you every day at all times. I cannot stress that to you enough, okay? Now, why? It is because you're going to constantly be getting information at all times. The moment you walk in on day one, they're going to start hitting you with information. It's going to feel like you're drinking from a water hose. It's going to feel like you're drinking from a water hose. You're going to get information all over the place. I'm looking in the comments. I see a lot of paper, pencil. I see a lot of both. I can go back and forth myself. I do that a lot of the times. Um, so you'll definitely want to have one that you go to first, but you back it up by the second one. And usually what that looks like for me, I have my paper, pencil, I have my planner, but then, um, you know, I go to my device and stick it in my device and put it on my calendar. And usually the calendar, of course, I need electronically. So I see lots of both. Forgive me. I'm not going to say that name the right way, but Miss Newkirk. I do both. I see a lot of both. Miss Irene, both, but pencil and paper would work best for me. I'm the same way, Miss Irene. I do the same thing. Awesome. Let's see. Celeste, hardcore paper and pen. Where are my electronic people? Any electronic people? Yes. Miss Garcia, electronic. Whoop, whoop. Some people are hardcore electronic people and they can do it. Like there's nothing on their desk their whole life. It's on the computer, on the devices, and they can manage. But I have to have a sticky note or two. Hey, Ashley. Hey, friend. Thank you for being on. Good deal. I have a question. Is there somewhere we can buy the planner you can create it? Yes. You can go to the website, Institute. You will see the first day diet course there. You will see the planner there. Everything's there for the only for you on the website, so no worries about that. Miss Mora, do you have your planner in electronic form? I do. I actually do. I need to post it. I'm going to make a note. See, I'm telling you, this is why you have to have paper and pencil. I'm going to make a note right now. I will put up, it's called a print at home option, so you can print it at home. Some people, I have one person, um, a few people actually, that print it and put it on disc. They like to put it on disc. So I thought that was kind of cool. But there is a print at home option. It's not on the website yet. I'll post it up after the session today, and that way you guys can access it if you need to. So no worries about that. Really good question. Hi, Ms. Sharon. Congratulations. I know you just passed your exam yesterday. Congratulations. She does both also. So really, really good. Okay. Good information. Keep dropping your comments or questions. I'm super big on answering questions. So you type away. There are no 
stupid questions. There are no dumb questions. You throw it out there if you want to have information about it. And I'll check back here frequently and keep up with your questions. Okay. All right, so let's talk about these organizational systems and why you literally have to have it with you every moment that you are a brand new diagnostician from day one. Like we said, you're going to be getting bombarded with information about your case load the moment that you touch down, all right? Like I said, it's like drinking from a water hose. It can get overwhelming very Fast if you don't have a way to organize the information that you're taking in at every moment. That's why you need a notebook and that's why you need a planner with you at all times. So let's talk about the kinds of information you're going to get about your caseload the day that you get there. <laughs> OK, I can. I'm telling you day one. All right. So, for example, let's say you get there. Everybody's greeting you. Welcome. You meet them at the admin's office. You haven't even gone to your campus yet. You haven't even seen your office yet. You have no idea um, where your office is. And your lead diagnostician comes to you and says, something like, listen, four kids from your campus on your caseload have been tested this summer and they need to have an art meeting by the first day of school. What? I just got here. You're hitting me with that already. But yes, you need to jot that down. You need to jot it down. You have four kids who need to have an art meeting before the first day of school. All right. Or or and a mom is going to call you and she's going to say, I need sped transportation set up for my kid for the first day of school. I don't have a way to get them there. That's all you jot that down. All right. Or the registrar will come to you and say, hey, you have two new kids who are going to be starting in two. I'm being generous. When I say two, it's going to probably be more than that. But for example, say you have two new kids who are starting on the first day of school. Here's their special education documentation. And you're like, what? OK, you jot that down. These are the things that you jot down. And that's how quickly information is coming to you. That is vital. Things that you cannot miss. It is coming to you. And that's just day one. It gets really overwhelming very fast if. You don't have an organizational system. The way to combat feelings of overwhelm and burnout, frankly, is to have an organizational system. You do not want to be that diagnostician that has pencils in your hair, pens all over your head, papers, documents, folders. You never know what kids you're meeting on. You never have an answer for anything when people are asking you questions because you don't have an organizational system. If you are not organized, that is OK. You can develop the skill and the way you start it is by doing what you're doing right now, getting the information on how to organize. Step tip number one, get a planner, get a notebook, get a pen and keep it with you at all times. All right. So this information that you have coming in about IEP needs and transfer kids and special education bus, this is what our day to day grind looks like. This is what I mean when I say you're managing tasks associated with your caseload on a daily best basis. It's a daily basis, but it's timeline and due date regulated every day counts. You don't have the luxury of forgetting something that you heard. That's not a luxury we have. You have to jot it down. If you didn't write it down, it does not exist. Promise. Okay. So let's talk about tip number two then. Tip number two. Whenever you're taking notes, you have to organize your notes. What? Yes. You have to organize your notes whenever you take them down. Why do I say that? Because you get to work on a Monday. You're getting this information about the sped bus and the parents are calling you and the R's and the people and all the things. By Thursday, you're going to remember, OK, I need to look at my notes and you're going to look back and you're going to see, OK, somebody told me to do something with four kids and I got to do something for the day to school. I don't know what they said. I'm reading my notes. But I've written so many and I wrote them so fast. I don't know what it means. <laughs> it's going to happen all the time. So you even have to organize your notes, friend. 
All right. I'm telling you, you have to organize your notes. So jot down the notes, include the day, the time, and the person who told you. So when it's Thursday and you're looking back at what you were told on Monday, you can see, okay, at eight in the morning, my lead diag told me I have to do blah, 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 blah by, you know, this due date. You want to be that clear and that um, organized with your note taking. It does not help you to have 13,000 sticky notes all over your desk thinking that's going to help you to stay organized. That creates to you or it adds to your hysteria when you do that. Sticky notes, one million sticky notes don't necessarily help you. That's why I recommend one notebook, friend. One notebook, one pen. All right? So you can, it's organized, time, date, who told you, what am I doing? And then boom, boom, boom. You have pages and pages and pages and pages of notes. But you can go back to it at any time and tell anybody what they need to know. You can find information that you need to know, boom, like that high organization and that is what i definitely recommend for you okay for sure for sure so organize your notes um now here's where it gets a little bit more tedious but here is how you survive your day-to-day -day work as a diagnostician this is this is big it was big for me that's why i want to share it with you okay all right, so not only do you organize your notes that you jot down in your notebook, one notebook in one place consistently all the time, including the day, the time, and who told you, okay? You also are going to organize your notes by task and by due dates, and you're going to put them on your calendar, okay? Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to share my calendar with you so that you can see it. And I'm gonna demonstrate this for you so you know what to do on day one when you walk into the door, okay? Okay, so here is our fake calendar, okay? So you get to work the first day and they, your lead diagnostician told you, hey, you have four kids who need to have art meetings because they were tested over the summer so you have to have art meetings for these kids okay so your first day of school hypothetically your first day at work as a diagnostician is july 31st let's say your first day of work is at on july 31st your first day of your first instructional day the first day of school is here so you're thinking about okay I have to have an IEP meeting, an art meeting for these four kids, all right? So you're going to put this on your calendar. The first thing you need to do is you need to think about, okay, well, shoot, it's only two weeks, three weeks, really. It's three weeks, one, two, three, before I have to have the art meeting before the first day of school. Usually, you can have it before or on technically the first day of school when most people want you to knock it out before okay so let's say that you're going to have your art i your four your four art meetings right here so you're going to go ahead and put them on your calendar and now this is for you iep meeting number one you don't have to invite anybody yet you're just putting these on your calendar do y'all use duplicate whenever you're planning on your your calendar Duplicate instead of starting over. I want to put it here. Duplicate again. IEP meeting number three. Hypothetically, I want to put it here. And then IEP meeting number four. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate that. Number four. Here. Bam. Okay, so I'm going to go back out to my monthly view. Okay, here's what I'm already working on day one. This is what it looks like. So the first thing you do is you put it on your arms and then you're like, well, shoot, I don't know who these kids are. I just got here. I'm not, I didn't even come from this district. I'm new to the district. I don't know the kids. I hadn't even seen my office. So now you have to read the FIEs. 
<laughs> you have to read the FIEs because you don't know what you're meeting on. So you're going to put that on your calendar. You're going to put it on your calendar. It doesn't help you just to be a line in your notebook. You literally have to put on your calendar, read the four FIEs of the new people. And whenever you put stuff on your calendar, be realistic. Like it's going to probably take you at least minimum, probably longer, but at least two hours to read through all that. Always, always, always be realistic with the time frame when you put stuff on your calendar. Don't just jot it up there um, because it can be very misleading when you see white space. Okay. So boom. All of it, this is all for me being at work for one day. This is what I have going on. Um, so you read the FIEs and then you think, well, shoot, I've never filled out the IEP paperwork. I'm not familiar with the IEP software they use in this district. Let's say you use eSped, evil, but whatever. You use eSped, so now you need a plan to prep the IEP paperwork after you read the FIEs. So that's probably going to take you, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to say one hour per IEP. One hour per IEP is probably going to take longer than that, but certainly at least an hour per kid to prep the IEP. Okay, but you're not done yet because then you think, well, hell, I don't know how to hold an R meeting. <laughs> I, this is a true story. This was me. I've never held an R meeting in my life when I first started. I'm like, hey, you have one in two weeks. You have four in two weeks. I'm like, what? Then you have to get yourself together in order to chair an art meeting. Um, and you have to find an agenda and you have to find a script. And then you're like, well, who do I invite? Who do I invite? So it's going to probably take you about an hour. You're going to actually schedule and invite people to your four IEP meetings. We'll say it takes you about an hour to do that. I love color, color coding my calendar because I know that I have a color for each task that I do. So when I glance at my calendar, I see color. So if I know it's all blue, then I'm evaluating that day. If it's all red the whole week, then I know that I'm doing IEP meetings. So that's another tip. Side note, I always color code the task on my calendar. So boom, here's what it's like. This is it. This is your day-to-day -day grind as an educational diagnostician. You have to organize your notes by task, by due date, and then put them on your calendar. It's, it's a lot. It can be a lot. If you're not organized, it can feel very overwhelming. So I'm going to stop a moment. I want to take some questions. What questions do you have at this point? Miss Carrie, do ARD do, oh, the ARD facilitator help with this or is it all me? And that's what I was saying, Carrie. Great question. It depends on how your district, your charter, your contract company sets that up. At any part of these tasks can be, you know, given to any particular person. It depends on how your district does it. Now, here's what I will say that I know that I that I've heard from different districts and different people working around Texas. And sometimes the art facilitator facilitates the meeting, they handle the IEP meeting, and then you as a diagnostician, you pop in to report the evaluation data and you pop out. I've heard that. That's kind of what I've heard. Um, but it varies district to district. So that's a great, great question. Hi, Alatera. How are you? Congratulations to you as well. Is this a work email or my personal email to set up a calendar? So, 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 so good. I always say all of your work junk needs to be on your work calendar, even if it's, even if it's a personal task, like call parent about SPED transportation. Put that on your work calendar. All of your tasks, all of your meetings, all of your testing, all on your work calendar if it's work related. Great question, Latera. Thank you. 
Beatrice. This is so helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you for being on. This is the information I wanted to get to you guys because I know what it's like being a new diagnostician. And I know they didn't teach you this in your coursework because they did not teach me. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to squeeze that in there. New district, new position. I have no idea where to start. I know you're in the right place, Ms. Simeon. You're going to be, you're on, you're in the right place. And this is how you start. You get a planner, you get a notebook, and you make sure that you start to write down everything that you get and then put it on your calendar accordingly. Day one, day one. And real, really, frankly, before you go back to work, your lead people are going to start emailing you stuff, emailing you, emailing you start organizing it and writing it down from day one really really good what about signature pages your district or charter school they're going to have a procedure about that miss martinez so don't get bogged down with that they're going to tell you specifically what they want you to do okay so do diacs write goals or do the SPED teachers? Is, okay, so again, I'm going to preface this response by saying it depends on your district or your charter school. My experience as a diagnostician, I'm, I'm in the Houston area. I worked in about three different districts over the last almost 15 years, and I have never written a goal for a SPED student. Ever. As a diagnostician, I've never written a goal. It's always been a SPED teacher's responsibility, but that's my experience down here in the Houston area, Irene. So good question. All right, Miss Amanda, this will be my first year as a certified diag. I am an art facilitator that transitioned into the role of a diag after my certification. Excellent. Congratulations. And no matter how organized you try to be, you always have curveballs every day. There is always something falling in your lap. That is why you have to have a system. That is so true. It's a constant, ongoing bombardment. But if you have a system, it keeps you from losing your mind. It keeps you from being overwhelmed, burned out, stressing, crying, the whole thing, which you still might cry. It's okay. No judgment. It's a lot, but you can do it if you have a system. It's constant. It's constant. So you have to have a system. Really, really good. Thank you for sharing that, Miss Amanda. Good. Miss Vanessa, so true, Amanda. This will be my first year at a campus on my own. Last year, I was supposed to start at an elementary, but on Meet the Teacher Night, they put me at a high school. <laughs> so I had to help learn the ropes to the other diagnostician at the campus. This is what it's like. This is what it's like. It's like this. But I'm telling you, if you have a system, sweet friends, you're going to be okay. It's every year, every first year doing anything, first year teaching, first year principal, first year anything. It's a learning curve. It's a lot, but you are you put in for this. You knew that getting into it. You're scrappy. You're ready to go. You're intelligent. You have what it takes. You're going to get it done. It is bumpy for any first year anything, but you have what it takes. The first thing you need to know out of the gate. It's not how to evaluate. It's not, it is having an organizational system. The system is what keeps you from losing your mind. Okay. It's a lot of information day to day, but as long as you have an organizational system, you're going to be good. You're going to be okay. All right. Awesome. I love it. Great questions, y'all. Okay. So that's what that's like. We did a calendar demo. We went through everything that you need to put on your calendar. That's how to organize your notes according to tasks, due dates, and putting them on your calendar. Okay. That, and also not to mention, you need to call back the mom about her sped bus and you need to get those transfer kids, their documentation up and going, let the proper people know they're on the campus all of that kind of good thing. So it can be a lot, but you have what it takes. All right. Now, that is why I created the first day diag course. I'm going to show my screen. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see. 
right here. All right, this is the website. This is it, www.thebornginstitute.com. You get there, you click on products and services. Okay, here you are, products and services. So this is everything that is available to you as a new diagnostician. So here I have group coaching. I literally have a group coaching where every month I meet with diagnosticians and we're talking about anything and everything that has to do with being an excellent diagnostician, how to get better, how to do your job well. We talk about everything from being a better person, because if you're a better person, then you're a better diagnostician. We talk about case management. We talk about evaluations, XFAS, cross battery, all the things. So if you would benefit from a mentor coaching group, this is it. So it's super easy. Click there if you want to know more about it. Here's an online digital course, and this is it. First Day Diag Digital Course. When you click on it, this is a digital course designed specifically for newly certified educational diagnosticians starting their very first job. This is for you, okay? Learning tips and strategies and practical first day advice on what to do from day one. Okay. We talked about, we talk about effective implementation. What do you do? What are you responsible for? What does the law say? This session covers things specifically on how to write an excellent FIE, how to hold an excellent IEP or art meeting, how to master your timelines. What do you do so you don't miss anything? And then da -da -da -da, a more about effective organization, but it's more specific to how do you take the caseload, break up the caseload, put it on your calendar and let it break down day to day to day so you're not losing your mind. I literally demo for you how to do that from day one. The biggest fear that most new diagnosticians have are is I'm going to miss something. I'm scared that I'm going to miss something. I teach you how not to miss anything, all right? And then this effective communication. I would say next to organization, this is the, the most important skill set that they did not teach me in the practicum program. Thank goodness, you know, I'm a natural communicator, but it's hard. We communicate all day. As a diagnostician, you deliver bad news to parents sometimes when you're telling them their child is disabled for the first time. You're having that conversation with them. When people are sitting across from you at an IEP meeting and you're telling them, no, we can't do that, and it gets contentious, there's conflict, all kinds of stuff. We communicate all day. I teach you how to do it well, what to look for, when do you need to do it, how do you say it? I literally give you a script for how to say or how to hold an IEP meeting. All right. I give you shells, a whisk shell, a C-top shell for how to write an effective FIE. All these tools. I give you all the tools. And then there's bonus content on how not to get burned out. That is the one thing that makes me so sad about diagnosticians of any years of experience when people feel like there's no, nothing else they can do but leave the role because they've gotten burned out. They've gotten overwhelmed. Um, and I put in some tips on how not to get there. I want you to love this work. Like I said, I've been doing it just under 15 years. I love it. I love it. And I want you to love it too. And I want you to win at it. I also have a digital course here, how to test for specific learning disabilities. That's another one. If you, um, if you need clarity and a foundational understanding on how to test for a specific learning disabilities. We talk about cognitive achievement relationships, understanding dyslexia and related disorders, y'all. Dysgraphia, what is the handbook? How do you test for dyslexia? What does dyslexia mean 
How is it different from a learning disability and basic reading skills? And why is it dyslexia? How are they the same? How are they different? How do you do cross battery? This is a big one. How do I even use the XPath software? <laughs> what do I do with it? This is the course, everything I included in, and then how to make the determination. How do you know? How do the scores talk to you as a diagnostician and say, this is a learning disability. This is not. This is dyslexia. This is dysgraphia. What does that look like? How do you know? And that's what this course is for. So these are digital courses. It means that when you purchase it, you get a link, you download it, the videos are there, the materials are there for you. You're able to watch it, play it back, use it all year, have it in front of you. It's like having a digital mentor at all time because I want you to win. I want you to be successful. I want you to have the information that you need and not have to rummage around and call 1,000 people to get some answers. So I attempted to um, answer as many questions as I could by creating these digital courses where I've gotten the most information. And then here's the planner. If you guys need the planner, again, any diagnostician with any years of experience is able to use the planner, but I definitely made it in the mindset of a new diagnostician. I made it big. I made it simple. It's straight to the point. And I wanted it to be enough note taking space for you to take the notes, organize on your planner, have everything in front of you all in one place and, you know, be able to rock on and be as successful as possible. So that's there as well. And like I said, I'll be sure to go back um, and put that online option, print at home option. I'll probably try to do that at one point today so that is up if you purchase the planner and usually gets to you within a week so i would say give it three to five days depending on where you are in texas okay um so that's there y'all i'm so excited i'm excited about you entering this field being a diagnostician and caring for children what is better than making sure that all children have equal and equitable opportunities to go be great, just like their peers who are non-disabled. They deserve an opportunity to be educated well, and we get to make sure that happens. So I'm so, so grateful that you become part of this field. I'm going to take a few more questions and then we'll be done. Okay, let's see what we have. Could you put the link in the chat, please? Okay. You want the link to the website, maybe? I can do that. I'll just give you the link to all the products and services. So you can just go straight there and it will be in the link. Okay. There you go, Miss Vanessa. Thank you for being on. Okay, Ms. Carey, how do you organize not really to do things, but procedural info? Do you put it in the same notebook, but further back? Carrie, um, when you say procedural info, I'm thinking that you mean like the steps your district wants you to take um, whenever you get initial consent, like district specific steps and things like that. Is that what you mean? Um, I probably would keep that electronic so I can refer back to it off and on. That's usually what I do is I keep it in a Google Doc. I guess I could show you guys my Google Drive. Um, I keep it in a Google Doc and I have folders in my Google Drive because we use Google in my district. Oh, I can't. It won't let me share that with you. Well, um, but I, that's where I keep it. So my go to every day, I have to review the steps because I don't know them by heart yet. I keep them electronically in a Google Doc, even though I'm a paper pencil person because I want to have it whenever I need it. And I can whoop, click it and have it in front of me at any time. So that would be my suggestion for that, Carrie. Really good question. All right. Let's see what else we have. Sharon said, I'm so excited <laughs> at the same time. That's everybody. And that's completely, completely, you know, it makes sense. It's completely normal. It means you're ready to go and in the right space. So don't, don't be worried about that. Don't be worried about that at all. 
And then, okay, Ms. Shana, what happens if you do miss an important date on a legal timeline? Do you have to make your report to the state just document really well? Well, yeah. So it wouldn't be you, though. It would be your boss people. Um, so if you miss a timeline, mainly an initial timeline doesn't feel good. I'll tell you that. So if you miss it, um, let your boss people know. Your boss people do have to self-report that. And then there is something they have to report the following year to ensure that no other initials are missed in that following year so different districts do that different ways but yes the state requires that you report that you meaning the district reports it and there's a report that goes along with that so really really good great questions all right is there any way to see the planner yeah trisha if you go on to my facebook page um the borton institute on facebook and I think it might be on YouTube, but on Facebook for sure, there's a video of the actual planner so you can see the design, see what it looks like, see the size of it. So it's there for you on the Facebook if you need it. Okay. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on. I hope that you found the information helpful. If there's anything that you need, um, if you have questions, if you have um, you need more information about something, no worries. Email me anytime. I'm at Borden Institute at gmail.com. You can email me anytime if needed. I highly recommend you get part B a part of the coaching group if you don't have a mentor, if you don't have diagnosticians around you that you can text or email or ask quick questions to or even hop on a video conference to discuss an eval or a what to do kind of scenario, I highly recommend the coaching group so you'll be around other educational diagnosticians that can kind of bounce off questions and just have a community of people to talk to so you won't feel by yourself. All right. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you being on. I will be back on the second Saturday of every month. All right. So I'll be back on second Saturday in August. And I'm going to focus on evaluations and what to do and how to organize evaluations if you're a new diagnostician. OK. All right. Thank you guys so much. If you need anything, email me, follow me on Facebook, follow me on YouTube, www.thebortoninstitute.com if you need anything else. All right. Have a great morning. Bye.